Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 Welcome to episode number 245 of Get Paid for Your Pad. Today I am joined by my very good friend Annie Kim. She is the author of A Beautiful Evolution, Overcoming Adversity Through Art. She lives in Las Vegas and she's an artist. And the reason why I invited her on the podcast is because she recently did some murals for Airbnb hosts and it looked really cool. And so I thought, let's talk about art and Airbnb. And so Annie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. I heard it's extremely hot in Vegas right now. It is. Uh, I'm actually at. Um, I'm actually finishing up the murals at our publisher's house, and it's like one. I think ten today, and then it's been raining, so it's been super humid. It's pretty miserable right now. What? I would. I would recommend right now to stay somewhere uh, a lot cooler. Yeah. What What's the temperature like right now? Uh, it's. It's. I think 106 today. 106. But it's like, but we usually have no humidity, but right now I think it's like 75 or 80 percent humidity because it keeps raining. It's like Wait, monsoon it, season it, right now. I didn't know it rains in Vegas. Yeah, it, in monsoon season in the summertime it does. And so it gets pretty humid and we get flash floods. It's pretty crazy. It's actually really cloudy, but it's super sticky outside. Awesome. So how's the mural going? <gasps> it's going great. I'm almost finished. Uh, I've done three of Jesse's rooms here. I'm finishing up the master today, um, but yeah, it's it. I love it. It just it's coming together so well. Awesome. Well, we'll talk more about that. But first, um, why don't you introduce yourself and let us know about your book, A Beautiful Evolution? Yes, of course. Um, so my book is called A Beautiful Evolution: Overcoming Adversity Through Art, and I started putting it together uh, five years ago after I had my second son, and it was actually more or less um, a compilation of my art and my journals that I was just going to show my kids when they got older. And it was just the things that I've gone through and how I actually did use art um, all my life to really deal with any type of stress or um, depression or anxiety or really anything I was kind of feeling. It was something that I always went to to have a free place to express myself. Um, And so about five years ago, I put this all together and I so happened to meet our publisher a few years ago. And we became friends and um, he saw some of my writings and encouraged me to actually release it. And so I, I did. I, I published it last year with him and it's it's been great. Um, so like I said, it has my journals and artwork from when I was like 17, uh, 16 or 17 up till, you know, just a few years ago. Just talking about like the depression I went through after I had my um, second son, my postpartum um, and just other issues I had growing up with abuse and trauma, um, and just way healthy ways that I found for myself, um, to let those things go. And have you always been an artist? Well, yeah, pretty much. I, I mean, since I remember I've been, I've been painting or doing some sort of art. My grandfather from South Korea, um, he was an English professor, but he also did wood, wood art, uh, woodworking. And my father actually, um, he does steel work and actually he does steel metal art. So I think it's always kind of been in my family, my blood. It's never, we've never taken any um you know classes or anything for it but it's just kind of always been there yeah sweet and and so what do you what do you think it's important for airbnb house to have some art in their homes because i think that each place should be so unique for your guest i mean that's what i think a lot of people who are going and using airbnb homes for want that experience they you know instead of going to a hotel that's beautiful but cookie cutter and kind of impersonal rather Rather stay at someone's home that has, you know, a little bit of who they are and a little personal touch where I know whenever I go to an Airbnb and they have, you know, unique pieces of artwork of like even local artists around, um, it just is kind of a cool introduction to that city you're visiting. 
And so I just feel like if you can put any type of personal touch on an Airbnb and make it stand out, you know, why not? Right. And now that there's so many Airbnb hosts compared to a few years ago, I think standing out is definitely something that's you know, more, more than more important than ever. Absolutely. Um, so I, I can totally see how having a couple pieces of art would really give it an extra flair. Now, I'm personally not really an art person. I, I know very little about art, um, <laughs> yeah. as, as, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so... You know, I'm just thinking if I would want to put a couple pieces of art in my in my home, like, mm-hmm. I wouldn't really know where to start. Yeah. Like, where Where do I find something? And also, like, it's such a, there's so many different types of art that you can choose from. I mean, you can go. Yeah. I, I know you do paintings and you do murals, but there's mm-hmm. you know there's all sorts of other stuff, right? So Absolutely. how do you like how how do you decide what type of art you should get, and and how do you find it? Well, first of all, um, I, what I love to do is I think going to anywhere you live locally, there's always first Fridays in downtown areas or, you know, art and craft shows, stuff like that Buy local artist stuff. I, that's really what I recommend because when you buy from a local artist and you meet them and you kind of get to know them, you get a feel from, you want to buy their art. You actually, you know, want to show what they have to say and creatively in your home after you meet them, because we think about it with everything when something's really special, it makes it special because it's personal. And so just going to a store and just picking out something like, oh, great, this, you know, giant picture of a palm tree looks cool. Well, yeah, but, you know, like that's been reproduced probably 50,000 times and that can be in anybody's house. But don't you want something unique in your home that makes it stand out? And I feel like if you like in Vegas, we have our first Friday downtown. If you go there and they have so many amazing local artists there. And I mean, you know, the price varies from, you know, starting at $10 up to, you know, like $1,000. But the thing is, at least if you go and you meet the artist and you make this personal connection, even if you know nothing about art, just meeting where they're coming from and their story of how they started this art and if the colors catch your eye and they do, it's like that alone, wouldn't you want to invest in something they created to have in your home? So I feel like that's really what it is, is it's finding that artist and that like personal touch and not just going out and, you know, finding a generic piece of, you know, art that's reprinted. That was going to be my next question. Actually, when I think about art, I immediately think about a painting costing like $5,000 or $10,000, yeah. but it doesn't have to be that way. You say, no, not at all. And that's what I mean about like going to your local downtown and where they have these art festivals and these art fairs where these local artists who are emerging and who are amazing, but just haven't been found and tapped into yet. Why not go there and invest in their stuff? You know, it just makes it so much more special, too, for your Airbnb, proper, Airbnb property, because then, you know, you can give a story along with how you got that art. And, if, you know, if they want to go to that area downtown and and see that, you know, it just opens up a whole um, community feel for that person visiting your Airbnb. And one tip that I got from Sophia, who's an Airbnb host here in near the airport in Los Angeles, and she's mm-hmm. going to be in the podcast next week. She had a pretty interesting tip where she actually uh, got some artists to display some of their work in her Airbnb. That's and, awesome. And then she put a, you know, she put a price on it so she would let people know that it was for sale. So yes. that, that's a really smart way to to get uh, some art in your house when you're Absolutely. on a budget. I love that, especially because like even local restaurants and cafes do that here in Vegas. And so it just promotes the artists. And then also, yeah, you can have, you know, every two weeks or so you can have a new artist basically displaying in your home and you're benefiting them. And then too, you kind of can have new looks. If you have a pretty neutral setting in your home, you can pretty much switch out art pretty easily. Got it. All right. Let's talk about the murals. Now I've, I've actually seen one of your murals in uh, Jesse's house. So Jesse is actually our publisher, um, both mine and also uh, Annie's publisher, Jesse Krieger. So shout out to, Lifestyle Entrepreneur Press, and he's probably he's published a lot of books now, actually, right? Like fifty or sixty or so. Oh yeah, at least (laughs) quite a bit. Yeah, there's probably a lot of them in in the house where you're at right now. Oh my gosh, I'm staring at a pile right now. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. 
and got paid for your pet was the first book that he published so that's kind of cool um but anyway so so that's about the the murals like it's something that i wouldn't necessarily think about when i think about art i think about a painting or i think about you know a little like bronze statue or something or absolutely something like that but you know what's 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 a mural and and why should we get it well with um, this mural that I'm, I'm actually doing three custom murals in his home. So uh, his master bedroom and then the two guest rooms. And what I love about doing for the without w- about doing a mural is that, you know, it really for me I feel like I'm bringing so much value actually to the home and to the property. Where of course it's awesome that you can take a painting with you, but I realized after I finished it here I was like, wow, this is like a whole nother level of. I don't know. It just, it's almost like coming to, you know, a gallery or museum. It's like something that can't be moved. It's, it's set to be there and it's going to be there for the, that owner and the next owner or whoever sees it. And it's cool. It's really, I, I, you know, actually after having it and like signing it, I'm like, wow, this is huge. I've, I pretty much kind of just started doing these murals. I've done them at my home for my kids and for some, for some friends. And, um, I've just, I, I just realized too, I, I like having larger scale canvases, just because I'm able to express more on it where, you know, I loved having, um, custom, I just love doing custom work. So with those murals, what I do is I listen to that person's playlist. Um, and I just kind of feel out whatever I get from them and from their music. And I'm like free to express myself completely on these giant walls. And for me, it's, yeah, it's unlike anything else. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I don't really know how to describe it. <laughs> it's like one of those things you have to come and see. Um, and so actually we, t- we've we taken some videos last week and I'll have them on my site and stuff, but basically exploring, explaining my process for each of these murals and like where my vision was coming from and what I take away from the person and how I customize everything. I really like the idea of having a different mural in each bedroom because then every bedroom kind of has its own theme. Yes, totally. So one of the rooms is like a underwater, um, kind of like an underwater, I would say like mermaid star scene. And then uh, another room is kind of like a tropical, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a floral tropical sunset. And then the master bedroom is like actually pretty dark. So the wall is actually uh, a dark navy, but it's like a whole gold foil and I'm doing little tiny dots. Um, so I'm making like a starry night representation of it. But what I'm doing is actually taking important dates from his birthday, uh, Jesse's parents' birthday, his sister's birthday, all their star symbols and signs. And I'm actually creating tiny little dots and making it look like the stars when you look in the sky. But then when you come up close to it, it's actually going to have a couple different meanings. And uh, and yeah, it's going to be, I'm pretty excited to finish it up. That no, sounds pretty. It sounds really awesome. Yeah, um, thanks. And I've I've seen I've seen them, so I know they are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to create these things? Um. Well, I mean, it's 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 a process. I would probably say uh, the master bedroom right now. I'm going probably. It probably takes a good four to four to six days to finish it. But I mean, those are pretty long days, like eight to ten hours. Mm-hmm. Um. But like a custom, you know, a custom wall painting, that would take me like a day. But these, but with the murals that I'm doing right now, I love layering things. So actually I did like a layer of plaster first, and then I carved in the plaster so that there'd be an image that would show through when I painted over it. And then, you know, so, and then I do gold foil and then I do hand painting on top of it. So it's, I mean, I, I do like 15 to 20 layers by the time I get done. So it really depends on the amount of detail the person wants, but I feel like, especially with Jesse, since, you know, I, he's a friend that I've known forever. It's like, I could go, I could do so many details. I could probably work on this for the next month, <laughs> but I have to, I'm trying to like stop myself to like, okay, let's just keep it down to four days and it'll be good. <laughs> awesome. And you're saying you're going to make some videos and put them on your website. Yes. I actually had a, uh, Jesse's videographer came by the other day and actually shot, um, some videos of me explaining the murals in the rooms. And, and so they should be done pretty soon. And I'll have those on my site. Oh, sweet. What's the, what's the website? My website is her-art.gallery. Her-art.gallery. Yes. Dot gallery. So not dot yes. com or... No. <laughs> <laughs> no dot com. <laughs> dot gallery. That's, that's pretty cool. I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that the upgrade. extension existed. Oh, yeah. I can upgrade that stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually looking at your site and there, there is a video on there already. Yes, I had the video for my book that was for uh, when it came out last year, just introducing it. 
Um, so that's that video. And then I do have a few videos of me painting live um, and kind of like my process of what I do there. And then also um, some past artwork that I've sold and current stuff and stuff that I'm working on now. How, for how long have you been selling your art, by the way? Because I think you started doing art more for yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually didn't sell my first piece. I mean, I sold one piece, I would say like four years ago, but I've had a problem with this um, because I am a terrible artist where I have a hard time selling my pieces because they be, all become very personal for me. They're experiences that I feel and that are, you know, creatively I let out. So for me to sell them, it's so hard. And that's actually why I got into doing murals and personal custom paintings, because I realized when I did my own art that I couldn't really let it go. But if I'm doing it for someone else, I'm I'm purely, you know, just a funnel for that person to create something that, you know, they might not be able to create. But, you know, if I can do that for them, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm looking at, you, at your some of your paintings. Um, you've quite a, you do have quite a lot of them there. Um, oh, yeah. are the, the ones, the ones that are on your website, are, are those sold for, for sale or no? I see some uh, of them says sold. So. Yes. So those other ones have been sold, but yeah, I mean, um, yes, I mean, I, I, I guess <laughs> I mean, I'm getting to that point right now. I'm uh, trying to figure out to do, I, I know I should, I want to do some like reprints of them so that then I can sell, since I have a hard time selling the originals, I figure if I could do prints of certain ones, then yes, I would be more than happy to do that. So other than the murals, um, you can also do custom paintings for, for people, right? Yes. For the Airbnbs. Yes. yes. And absolutely. And I actually also do, um, these molds of where I've been molding women who are in their like last trimester of their pregnancies. And I actually did it when I was pregnant and, uh, customized. I do uh, like a plaster mold, on your abdomen and your bust. And I create that into almost a huge wall piece for your nursery and customize it to, you know, your theme or whatnot. And it's like a hanging, beautiful piece that, you know, your child can look at later on. And, and it's pretty cool. My sons look at theirs now and they're like, it's so crazy that <laughs> that was, you know, that was how they began, but it's, it's a pretty cool, um, like memento to have. Yeah. That's really awesome. I love that idea actually. That's, yeah. That's really great. Um, so how, how long does it take if, if somebody wants you to do an, a, a personal like custom art painting or a mural, like how, you know, how long would it typically take? Um, I would say custom piece of art would usually only take me one or two days to do, but depending on where the person's at, um, I mean, with like shipping and traveling, you know, that would just take a few more days, but with like an actual mural, um, for one room, I would say four to six days on average. Right. And you you would obviously have to travel to the to that Airbnb. So you're so you're in Vegas, right? Yes, I am so, in Vegas. So like kind of cities that are nearby, like Los Angeles, places in California. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, I, I you know it's nice is that I usually travel twice a month, doing different type of arts and events and murals and stuff like that. So it's it's I have a really nice schedule where I'm able to do that. And so um, you know I'm lucky that I have that schedule, so I can pretty much go anywhere. Awesome. I was just thinking, what if somebody wants to try and create their own art? Like, yeah. Do, do, you have any, mean, do you have any advice? Like, if I have no idea where, where I would start. Like, how yeah, do you, you make know, a painting? You know, uh, this is a, a piece of advice I give to a lot of people who've never really done any painting, kind of want to get into it. Instead of going to, like, an arts and crafts store, I think it's a great suggestion to go to, like, a Goodwill. Or, you know, uh, because they have those, you know, frames that are used – paintings that are already on there, but then you can kind of refurbish them. And then too, when you do that, you don't feel like, you know what I mean? You don't feel like you're wasting so much. And like, you you know, when you kind of don't know what you're doing, you're starting out, it's kind of cool to have something that's already framed. And then if you just take white over that, over the actual painting, if you want and white it over and then just do something simple, just start with basic colors. And I mean, you really don't have to do anything major to, to make something highlighted. Just think of something that you enjoy. So if you enjoy, you know, birds or flowers, just do something very simple. I mean, there's so many artists out there that, you know, from our past that you see and you're like, oh my gosh, it looks like a scribble. I mean, you know, the thing is art's art. You don't judge it. It's just whatever it is creatively you want to let out, do it. Great. And, you know, and be proud of it. <laughs> you mentioned the bird. It's, uh, it just makes me think about these scooters that we have here in Santa Monica now. <laughs> <laughs> 
I said bird because I'm literally looking out of Jesse's window right now, and there's like a bunch of birds just flying around. Him. <laughs> that's the that's actually the reason why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I, I love these scooters that they have. I don't know if they are in all the cities in the U.S. yet, but. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're right. I know. I was thinking about that, too. The limes and the birds. The limes and the birds, yeah. So yeah. For, for, for the people who haven't had a bird or lime experience yet, so these are like tiny little, what, you call them scooters. But scooters, yeah. I don't yes. know. Like when I think of a scooter, I think of more of a motorbike. But these are basically, uh, how do you describe them? These They're like, they're like little I mean, electrical scooters where you can just you can stand on top of them and yes. and then like you kind of like, you have to use your legs to kind of like give it a little <laughs> bit of speed in the beginning and then you press the gas and it just, yeah. it starts, it starts going and you can pick them up anywhere, anywhere in the city. And yeah. the cool thing is you can drop them off anywhere as well. So you can just park yes. them whatever, wherever you're going. So, yeah. Um, so it's, it's dangerous cool. thing. Like, but just side warning, you have to wear a helmet. Oh. <laughs> you, have to be, uh, you have to be in a bike lane. And what was the other one? You have to, if you, you have to go on a road that's under 35. Yeah, well, right. yeah, no, under <laughs> under 25, actually. So I got pulled over by a cop uh, while I was on one of these scooters. Um, and so, uh, you know, one thing that I didn't know was you, you, could, you can get a DUI on these things, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of crazy to me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the, the police officer, he pulled me off the road and he's like, uh, telling me that there were some rules around using these, uh, these electrical scooters. And so he told me you can only drive on the, uh, bicycle lane or on the road if it's 25 miles or less and you have to wear a helmet and you're not allowed to drink. And I yeah. was basically, I, I was, uh, I, I drank, I brought <laughs> And I was on the on the fast road, <laughs> and I wasn't wearing a helmet either, so I was doing two things wrong. Uh, but still, he was, you know, he was uh, uh, friendly enough not to give me a fine. So yeah, that's why we like Santa Monica. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, everyone's so so chill here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, those. Uh, yeah, I love them. I I haven't taken them hardly any Ubers since I arrived. I just, even when it's quite far, it's, it's just so much fun to, right. you know, to spend like 15, 20, 25 minutes just cruising around on one of these Absolutely. things. Absolutely. It's so much more fun. Especially like visually catch, you know, like you get to see so much when you're on one of those, you know, you get to see all the art in the city. You get to like just experience it in such a different way. Yeah. There's a lot of art in uh, Venice talking about like, if you want to get, you know, some affordable art yes. in Venice, there's always people selling all sorts of stuff. Yes, that's so funny. I'm actually coming out there on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to take my kids and just hang out. And we're actually staying in an Airbnb in Venice um, specifically for that, just because I love it there. And then, too, I know it's kid-friendly. We could walk around, and, like, the art and the food and everything there is just amazing. Who are you staying with? Uh, I'm staying with my friend Mike. Hi, Mike. He listens in. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's been... <laughs> Mike's we mentioned uh, quite a lot recently. Yeah. And his, his Airbnb in Venice. Um, me and Mike became good buddies. We've been out surfing, so it's been it's been really fun. And I actually met him at the Airbnb meetup that I had here in Santa Monica, which was super fun. Um, and you're so you're flying from Vegas to Santa Monica on Tuesday. I'm flying from. <laughs> from Los Angeles to Vegas, I'm going the other way around. So we can wave Hilarious. wave at each other. Mid yeah, I'll see you at the window. <laughs> I hope it's going to get a little bit colder in Vegas you know what? before actually, I get there. Uh, your timing's pretty poor because when you fly in, it's going to actually be the hottest I think day of the entire year on Tuesday. That's why oh, I was God. like, yes, I'm flying out on the right date. But yeah, sorry. Fortunately, our Airbnb there has a pool, so I'll. Oh just, yay! <laughs> I'll just hide in the pool all day. Yeah, until it cools down. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let, let's get back to the topic of art and Airbnb. If people are, are interested in um, in getting a, a custom painting from you or a mural, how can they how can they contact you? You set your website. And by the way, I recommend um, definitely check out check out the website. It's pretty cool. You can see a bunch of videos of Annie making some art. It's really entertaining to watch. Um, it's uh, so it's her dot her no her dash art dot gallery her yes. art dot gallery yes perfect perfect so there people can people can also find your contact information I think right yeah yes they can email me from there and then they can see all my social media stuff on there also where I kind of um out 
on the updated art that I'm doing right now, I'll do time-lapse photos of my process so you can kind of see how it starts. And, and then, you know, because a lot of my paintings start off looking like, you know, it's going to be a swan or something. And then all of a sudden the swan turns into a skylight and then the skylight turns into a boat and then it turns into something else. And so it's kind of cool to see how it evolves. And uh, yeah, so you can follow all that along. Sweet. So when are you going to start hosting an Airbnb? When am I going to start hosting one? <laughs> oh, my, you know what? I actually should, my, I should actually host it at my Vegas house because my entire house is just artwork and like it's out in the middle of nowhere and have no internet or cable. So it's actually in the most non Vegas home <laughs> you would ever expect. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, that's a good idea. I might do that. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, well, you, you're going to have to get internet if you want to be an Airbnb host. Oh, I think. <laughs> oh, oh, or actually, man, you know that's what? That's true. Oh. You know what? <laughs> actually, come to think of it, that might be a good way to stand out. To say, like, hey, my house has no yeah, internet like, and no cable, but it has a yeah. lot of art. Like, yeah, maybe sorry, so, a lot of art. You can hike, like, my backyard. You can just hike right up a mountain and, like, get away from Vegas. But, yeah, I yeah, I don't think I can do that. I refuse to do it. I'm not, I can't do it. I, I'm sorry. No internet, no cable. I <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that could actually be uh, a way to stand out. So, like, my house has no internet. You know, everybody else yeah. is you know, emphasizing that they have really fast Wi-Fi. And you could yeah. say, like, oh, when you come to my house, you can live I'm in peace opposite. because you can't actually no connect Wi-Fi. to the internet. <laughs> right. I'm like, that guy has fast Wi-Fi. Guess what? I have none. <laughs> come over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that, you should try it. I'm really curious. <laughs> I'm really curious to see if, how how that would work. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure for somebody who's probably really stressed out and <laughs> wants to get away, that would be a perfect place. But I mean, that's probably why I'm able to paint so much. And I'm, you know, it's it's kind of because I am in my own little bubble and not stressed out by you know everything going on all the time and having you know internet and all the stuff in my face. I'm kind of able to break away and do my own thing. Yeah. So that's, is that why you chose to have no internet and cable? Yes, that's exactly why. I, I mean, because I realized that I grew up with no internet or cable. I mean, you know, I grew up in the 80s, so it's like I didn't have that. And I didn't have a cell phone or anything like that until I think my early 20s. And I enjoy being disconnected. It makes me more creative. It makes me more connected with other people because I enjoy personal experience. You know, I, I'm that person who, like, I, I want to meet the person that's living next door to me. I want to, like, get to know my neighbors. I, You know, I say hi to people at the grocery store. It's like I like that connection. And it's hard because people just nowadays, you know, people do get so disconnected. And having two little kids, I want them to be able to have both experiences of, like, riding your bike and, you know, going out in nature and doing fun stuff like that. And But not being connected to social media or the Internet 24-7. I don't think that's healthy for anybody. I totally agree. And it's really a lot of fun to play outside, you know, kick a ball around, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I just played softball this morning with my kids. I was awesome. <laughs> I'm like, you know, it's just to be disconnected from everything else is it is. It's it's really it's a nice relief. Awesome. Well, any thank you so much for joining today. You're welcome. On the thank you. Get paid for your pet podcast, and for those who are interested in Annie's work, you can go to her. So that's H E R dash Art A R T dot gallery and yes. of course you can also just send me an email at jasper at get paid for your pet com and then the only thing that is left is to thank you the listener for listening and to let you know that on monday 10 30 i always do a live facebook and instagram um video so please join me it'll be fun we can do we can chat you can ask all sorts of questions and uh i'll probably have a guest as well um so it'll be it'll be great so thanks for listening and until next time get paid for your pet get paid for your pet get paid for your pet